It's factual. It's it's the truth. You know? You, well, is it really the truth? So you can have friends, you can have family members, but like, it all ultimately just comes down you versus you, you know? Wait, she was like talking shit to you in Spanish? To her friend. About you? About me in Spanish. So, I was just like, laughing my ass What'd off, you do? Bro. What'd you do? I was like, Ustedes saben que hablo español, verdad? And they're like, huh? Hella shocked and shit, you know? Hella surprised. Bimbo! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Powerhouse. My name is Eric Garcia. You're watching the Powerhouse Podcast. Yes, sir. We're back again. I'd like to say this is like season two, but uh, in reality, this is just is ongoing. It's, it's, we're going forever. That's what it is. So blessed to be back here. Um, hope you all are doing good. Um, I got really special guest today. My brother from another mother. We got Danny Magana and Mexicano, Mr. <laughs> Six Three out here. Uh, yeah, what's you good, bro? Know, How what's you doing? Up? I'm doing great. Um, thank you. It's a privilege to be on this. I know it's just the beginning, but I like the idea of this podcast. What's what its message and its goal and what it's um it's just trying to be, you know, just another an, source and the outlet for people to listen on just individuals, and things like that. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this has been this has been in the works for a bit because I know for those of you guys that don't know, we'll we'll get into you know where you're from, what you're doing now, but um, we've been friends since like high school. Yeah. Uh, that's where we met, and. I think recently we all started kind of getting back together, hanging out, and I'm like, damn, I need to get my, like, someone asked me, like, oh, why don't you get your friends on the podcast? And I'm like, damn, that's a really good question. I guess I never, at, at first, actually, I'll be honest, um, I, I didn't want to get my friends on the podcast because I was just doing the podcast as something that I was following, mm -hmm. and then once you guys started kind of getting interested in it, because I, I didn't know how anyone was going to take it, like, oh, that's cool, like, bro, what are you doing? Like, why don't you get a job, this and that? And then you guys were really supportive. I was like, oh, shit. And then that's when I'm like, because I'm always like uncomfortable with th these things. Like someone was like, why don't you get your mom on the podcast? Yeah. I was like, that's a good question. Like, I don't really think of those things. But that'd, be, that'd be cool, though. I'll, I'll watch that was, if your mom was on it. I think that'd be pretty dope, honestly. Because like, Next, she's the one episode. she's the one who raised you. So she knows like m more yeah. things about you than you know about yourself in a way. Yeah, exactly. So she's getting her perspective on things. But like you and as a little kid and now growing up, like. Like what, what her thoughts are. I think that'd be like a dope ass podcast. And, and same thing for with you. Like my my boy that actually knows me from high school to seeing us now. Like that's that's another good yeah. episode. So that's that's why I want to let you guys know. If you guys know Danny and I, you guys probably know that we've been friends for a while. Yeah. And so if you guys watching, it's finally out. <laughs> um, Danny, why why don't you tell them you know who who you are? I know you as Danny Magma, yeah. which is funny because that's just an old inside joke. But tell <laughs> tell, them, tell them who you are. Tell them tell uh, them what you're doing and, and tell them yeah. Tell well, yeah, my name is Daniel Magana. As many of you know, um, I multiple nicknames. I'm not gonna name any here, but if you want to comment something in the comments, go ahead. You know how it goes. Um, if you make a new one for me too, it's fine as well. As long as it, it catches on, it's nice. But uh, yeah, my name is Danny. Uh, I was basically uh what. Born and raised here in the what San Rafael, Marin County, my entire life. Uh, moved up to Oregon when I was like a little ass kid. When I was like one years old, I remember shit. For real? Yeah, I maybe that's why I like the cult so much. Damn, I never even knew. Yeah, that. now I'm, uh, my parents talked about it the other day, and they're just hella funny because like little ass kid, I don't know what the fuck was going on. What well, can I curse? Shit. Yeah, yeah. All right, for sure. It's not. This is a uh, family special, but. Family special. We all family, so it doesn't matter. And we all special too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, nah. I mean, I was just born and raised here. Um. Uh, middle child is a younger brother Nando as many as you probably know watching this as well go by Fetro yeah. or Nando Fachaso nicknames as well Pamurir then older brother too Pochi or Rafa this who Mr. Cameraman met him hella funny um, but I think that just that was the dynamic I grew up in all guys uh, first generation uh, both parents were hardworking immigrants came here from what 15 years old so just kind of that lifestyle, just like being disciplined, do, doing your work first, and just being on top of your own shit, which is always like instilled in me as a little ass kid. Yeah. And I think there was like a point in my life that just kind of just switched from. I mean, I was I've always liked school. Don't get me wrong, mm. but um, I think that's like one of the main segments that made me allow me just kind of like relieve some of the stress, and just kind of be like, all right, like fuck what's going on at home, fuck was this, what's going, what's doing later. Like, I think like this was like school. It's like one of the only platforms for me to actually express myself like more than just like as a person but actually as a student you know and i feel like that kind of just separated me from like a lot of my peers as well because i feel like some of us didn't have the same mindset yeah. or the same like need because like as little as kid you know um like i had an older brother and i looked up up to him like a lot but then he had shit with the uh, with uh, the ops with cops uh just legal shit like that too 
So that's just kind of changed my perspective. And then there's this one instance where the his PO came to my house, and I was home alone. I got house to style because like, bro, well now I'm six three. I'm pretty tall, right? But back then I was like what fourth, fifth grade, and um I can reach the people. So I looked all the way around. I'm like, what the fuck? There's three foods outside, vests on, strapped up. And then the thing is too is like, they're not telling loud. And I was just in the in the uh, living room doing um uh, homework. And the thing is, like, my parents, my mom and my brother just left to go uh, to Best Buy to get some shit. And I just decided to stay home. Yeah. And this fool's knocking the door. I'm like, oh, fuck, what happened? So I got my parents to back home. Let me open it. Oh, but shit. then I opened it. I was like, oh, is he here? I'm like, yeah. I mean, like, is, is, he, is my brother here? He's like, no, not right now, but he lives here. And he's just walking, no warrant, no nothing. Not right now. Like, it was even illegal. They didn't show no warrant, no anything. And then um, uh, from that day forward, I, um, my dad came home, too, and he asked me about the situation. And at that time, in the fifth grade, I won a, a consistent achievement award, which just gave me a scholarship to Dominican. I didn't go there, obviously. It was a $2,000 grant. And from that day forward, my dad asked me if I showed the officers in the house the award I got. At the time, as a little kid, I understand what that meant. Yeah. But now, as I grew up and I'm older, he wants to show, like, this family is more than just what my brother represents. Because uh. when you think about it, my last name, Magana, kind of has, like, a bad reputation at TL because all my other cousins went there. But they're all kind of, like, hotheads and they did stupid ass shit there and shit too you know and like i came to school with that reputation like oh this was last name this said watch out for him you know yeah. but from like the fifth grade moment like i know it's like oh, school although i like school school is more than just something that i enjoy it's something i have to go and pursue in order to become like a better person and or in order to be some, become successful because i know there's like two routes the easy route and the quick route yeah. which obviously is a lot more sketchy a lot more risky but you can make it out like you know sometimes alive and with a hell of money or you call like the the other route, which is school. Or maybe not even school too, but just like the more like cleaner way option, you know. And I had to choose between both, and I and I think I made the right decision. But I know that just from that point forward, it just completely changed my perspective on school and how people view me and my family uh, in general, you know. So just from that point forward, it's like school it is, and school it was, and school for, it will be. Bro, I I actually forgot it. you told me that story. That yeah. was a uh, that was. Even, dude, as a kid, because when you're doing that as a kid, bro, like, when you're experiencing that as yeah. a kid, that's tough. And, and you don't really know what's going on. You're supposed to see, like, the police as, like, people that protect Thank your you. community, right? P police are supposed to be around. They're supposed to be involved. You know, you're supposed to know, like, back in the day, you knew the first name of the chief officer yeah. here in the, in the community, right? Um, and now, like, even just me thinking, I've told this story before on a, on a, um, a TikTok post and an Instagram post that, like, I was harassed by police out yeah. here. And it's crazy because, like, you, you see that shit and then you see it as a kid. Yeah. And as a kid, you're like, what the fuck? Like, it, it just did it change your perspective on the police and that, that system? Or, like, I know you said it inspired you to kind of lead the way because you had to face those odds. You had to yeah. go against the odds as a kid. But did it inspire you in any other way, like, besides school, uh, specifically, like, becoming, like, a leader or, like, even just a brown boy in Marin County? Because that's kind of what it is now. I just kind of viewed it as, like, in a way, on, on top of that, too, like, also being a little ass kid, like, you, when you look at, when you have an older brother, like, who's, like, nine, ten years older than you, in a, in a sense, you kind of, like, understand that, like, you obviously look up to him, you know? No matter what your brother's doing, you don't know what, you, what your brother's doing at that age, you know? And then, like, as a little ass kid, I was, like, what, 10 and maybe 11 years old? He was like 16, 17, maybe. Oh, so from that perspective, like, I view my brother, my old brother as like everything, you know, like he's perfect. He does nothing wrong. Yeah. This and this and that. And then like, just to have like that innocence taken away from me, like within a matter of seconds, uh, I'm like, yeah. damn, like she's not how, it's not, she's not really how it seems, you know? Yeah. And that just kind of just changed my perspective on like everything, mm -hmm. you know? Damn, as a, how old were you, 11? Not 10, 11, yeah. yeah. And then not only that too, because like my parents would tell me like, yo, Ve a la escuela or go to school. Do your right. homework. Do your homework, you know? And I never understood why. But that moment, now I understand why. Mm. So I didn't question my parents as much, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's, then, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, cool. that's crazy, though, because, like, for me, at least, like, that's how I, that's how I saw it, too. And, and you guys will know, um, and we'll get into this later as well, like, where you're going now, yeah. what you're doing now, what you're studying. Because that actually comes back full circle. Like, yeah. the law is what made you kind of. Yeah. open up to that and exactly. now that's where you're pursuing that, no, no, that's one of one of the main reasons why but we'll get into later but yeah that's like when like one of the like the moments i could pinpoint like this is what i want to do mm -hmm. it was like that that one like right there and i still live in the same house to this day you know yeah. and like nothing's very much changed in my household like the same it looks exactly the same fucking way mm. so i'm like it's furnished the same way it's kind of funny but like you know just coming back from school to this like it kind of reminds you like this is where everything's at but yeah now yeah because that that for me I don't know. I always thought that school was the way, but lately, like, I've been so against school. And I'll give you guys an example, bro, because, and this is, this actually goes to show that 
your school and what Babson College and, and, and the, the school that you guys go the go to, UNAP, AP's uh-huh. behind the camera guys for you guys that don't know, is miles above what I expect any other university to actually offer because, bro, I, I go to San Francisco State, guys. Uh-huh. I just transferred there. I go to class yesterday, Vamos. first day of school, bro, and literally – First class, they didn't they didn't know I got no email about the software I'm supposed to use, where to attend class. Uh-huh. And it's online. I missed my class because I, I emailed my teacher twice. I said, Yo, can I get a link for the Zoom for the Canvas? Nothing's showing uh-huh. up. No response. Send her email right before class or like two hours before class. It was nine AM, so it was like seven AM. Um, no response. Missed first cl- first uh, missed the first day of class. Go to my second class, go to uh, drive up to SF, drive uh-huh. up to the city, bruh, black religion. No professor there. Just eight, me and eight students were just talking. We're like, okay, so I guess class is canceled. No one showed up. Dude, halfway through the day, two classes in, no school yet. I haven't learned a single thing. I'm like, damn, bro. Like, school's a joke, bro. I'm like, school's a fucking joke. I'm literally wasting my money. And then I'm like, whatever. Go to my last class. Last class was cool. But it just goes to show how, like, my perspective of the actual education system is very influenced based off my experience uh-huh. and same thing with you but I, I feel like your experience lately has been pretty good from what i hear about your school from what you know you guys are the second um top entrepreneur school in the uh, number in the one country. number one for uh, 26 years in a row number one number one Shit, bro. my bad babble my bad um exactly exactly and so that's why i'm like damn bro because like i always thought school was the key but then i'm also hearing like school is not the key so it's interesting to see you and and, and your development ap mm-hmm. and his development and you guys going over there and I mean, Boston's cool. How, how how's your experience been like in uh, in Boston? And what did it feel like when you when you first dipped? When I first dipped, for me, it was something I look forward to honestly. So because like, I don't want to be stuck in California, stuck in Marin, or stuck with something, just with people I knew. Why not? Um, because I just I just feel like I needed explore shit from my own. You know, like mm-hmm. being not like independent. Obviously, in a way, I like obviously I had a- AP that to come with me and, and come to the same school and should just have someone there. Which like a great hope, like just the knowing someone in the first place, because like making friends, making uh, like just new people, meeting new people for the first time, especially, there was something to be like nerve wracking, especially it's, like well, I, I went at seventeen years old to college. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy to think about, because in that same camp, it was like what 21, 22 year olds, fucking AP knows. Um, <laughs> but um, no, it was something I look forward to, but I was also nervous as well. Uh, my older brother Pochi, he came with me as well, and the fool's more excited than I was, because he's never been on a plane before. You know, when yeah. it came out of California, he's always been stuck in this, and like in the same bubble. Yeah. You know, so the, for him to go out there and like, to have a new environment, for me, like, I, I, for him was like something new to him. Yeah. But for me, I feel like having a new environment was like needed for me to become like just to grow, yeah. and just to see what what I really need to work on. You know, because sometimes you can have friends around you, and they can tell you one thing, but they only tell you shit to like the shit you want to hear. Yeah. And other friends tell you what you really need to hear, and you may not like it. I'm not like I'm not either one of those people. I'm just saying there's people out there, just mm-hmm. giving give, give or take. But if you just like going to a new environment, especially being all paid for it as well, full ride and everything, like why wouldn't I take the opportunity to go abroad? Not abroad, but go, go across the country for free, and just learn something new, try something new. Cause it's not gonna hurt you in any way, shape, or form. You know, yeah. staying in California or staying in Boston, is, that choice is not gonna hurt you. Re- no. Real quick, so to someone, because bro, I didn't know. Like when when I heard about this, I was like confused because I'm like, because I didn't know you, but I also like I knew you from Avid, right? Uh-huh. We had the same uh, class where we go every year, and it was like a college uh, help class, basically. How would you give someone advice to if they want to be in that position? Because I know like there's some people that are in your position that were uh-huh. in your position, uh, or that are in the position you were in, where, that want to say like, yo, I want to go to school, but it's too expensive for me. They think it's the only way out, right? Yeah. Um, I, I personally don't think of that, but for someone that does, like, how would they go about like getting a full ride? Cause I mean, it's funny. Cause like some of like my good friends, like you, him, like even thinking like, I think Cindy, yeah. um, I think Kendra, like they got like full rides and I'm like, yo, how's everybody getting full ride? Like, it seems like they're handing these out, yeah. which is partly true because yeah, they yeah. are just handing these things out. What do, what criteria do some people need to meet? This is just a quick side uh-huh. tangent, but what was that criteria like? Like, what do you, what would you recommend to these kids? I think for the criteria specifically, I think it, it really depends on um, what you're looking for for out of a school, you know, like for my school it was like all business school, it was all private school. And it was like, for me, it was like my top choice, you know? And I think coming with that, I was like, like, so when you, when, okay, so in order for me to get to my school, I found out in, in December, usually, when do you usually find out? 
Uh, May 1st, I think, or March 1st. April, May. So I found out basically like four or four months early, right? But what people don't know about that is like, I used to go to a program. I'm still part of it, Next Generation Scholars, NGS. And basically my whole junior year, my whole uh, senior year, basically up to that point, I am a... Uh, so junior year, I took a, a comm course, right? And that's just to boost up my GPA because honestly, my uh, first two years of high school, I kind of half-assed it, you know? I was, I was getting like A's and B's, you know, but like more B's and A's, obviously. So it was like the best GPA out there. And on top of that, I was like, I was kind of like half-assing it. I really putting in that work and shit like that. You know, I was just kind of like, like, just like, oh, this is easy, you know? Yeah. And But then I took comp courses. I took one of those on my free time. It helped my, boost my GPA. Honestly, I put in a lot of work and effort into this shit because like we people don't know, it's like ever since like what, seventh grade AP was it? All the way to like my, my uh, our, our junior year of high school or senior year of high school. I would go over the summer for the three months of summer and take courses, like actual classes, you know? That's a part of an actuation scholars, you know? And being as a, as a little kid, you know, like, you feel like, oh, summer should be fun, have time off and shit. But, like, yeah. now I look back on it, like, that should help me a lot because it's just, like, uh, learning math, speaking, writing, and shit I struggled with, you know? Like, and they give you homework, they give you books. We didn't read any of those fucking books, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I like, we did had math courses, history, science, and we just took all those classes, you know? And like and that work that I slowly put in like all those course of the years like obviously it just builds up you know yeah, it, accumulates. It, it accumulates over time and then like going back to my junior year of high school I was like after school I would go to my program and be like there for four or five hours and just writing essays writing whatever I could doing homework you know just being on top of it because like it took me like ten or twelve essays to have the final one mm-hmm. and they, all they got wow. slowly better and better and better you know like I wasn't. It, it just became like through that process, you know how to write more, you know what exactly what you want to say, how to become become more articulate and shit like that too. Mm-hmm. So like at that point, like that kind of helped me too. But like I just put in a lot of work and effort. So like, yeah, and true. you gotta start from an early time with your essays and shit, like in your sophomore year. So when time comes around, you when you turn them in, like you have it like basically all finished, and you take in some pieces, take out some pieces to fit for your college's prompt because all prompts from all colleges are kind of same, but the same thing at the same time kind of different. So yeah, you, you gotta do your research properly, and just know what you really want to go for. Cause like for my school it was all private school, and it's all business school. So like once I was there, I really couldn't change anything from business, you know. So you, you gotta know what you really want to do, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, but that's it just, I just put in like a lot, a lot, a lot of work from like seventh grade, all the way up to high school, basically. Damn. That brings up the question for me then, bro. Uh, it's kind of like a two parter. Uh-huh. One. Do you enjoy school? And two, if yes, or, or why or why not? And is that because of what you're pursuing? And maybe you want to get into your major and, and what you're going to do after school? Um, No, not honestly. Like, school for me has, like, always been something, like, the way I viewed school as a little kid and now, it's, I can always get some, something from it, learn from it, and be and do something with it. Not necessarily just, like, actually apply it. You know, but like just having that information like ready and available and like knowing how to do things simply, hmm. like it just always just like fascinated me. Like I always found like history interesting, math interesting, English not not really, science yeah. Wow, really. Because like for me, like at least with math, I know there's like one answer or one solution to it. You know. Okay. And like I can attack it in any way. Like I can attack it through multiple forms. Right. And I can still get the same answer as someone else, you know? Yeah, it's like that logical stimulation. And logical right? stimulation, exactly. Okay. And history, I like history simply because, like, it was just more, um, it's factual. It's it's the truth, you know? It, well, is it really the truth? Is that really the truth, obviously? Okay. But the way they present it and the way they show it, it's the truth. There's some there's some truth to it. Let's right. put it like that. There's some right. truth to it. Right. There's some okay. there's something that um, um you could gain from it, you know? Yeah. Well, it's also like a story, right? Yeah, it's so a story. You, and it's, so it's you, interesting. It's interesting. Right. And there's some shit like that that's always interesting. It's just always school always interested me, and I was never bad at school. Yeah. So for me, it's like I'm not bad at it. I could improve on it. I could get better, and I could get, become smarter. Yeah. So yeah. might as well just put my time and effort into it. Okay, I see that. But sometimes it could be a burden. Don't get me wrong, because it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of effort to put into it to actually be like a good student. Yeah. But to me, like I don't mind putting that work in because I know I'm gonna get something out of it at the end of the day. Right. It's, it's where you want to go, right? It's part exactly. of the journey, right? Okay. And it's, so something, it's something that I need to go through in order to go where I want to be. Okay, damn. So then I guess talk to me about your goal and, and where you want to uh, where you want to go. I guess in this next coming year because you're about to graduate. Senior season yeah. is coming up. 
Um, it's funny because I just had a podcast like a few months back with a senior in high school. Now I'm having one with a senior in college. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, what's the works, bro? You're law. You studying yeah, yeah, law? Yeah. Um. So yeah. So basically, at my school, it's an all business school, as I've been saying. But because of that, there's like a segment called business law, and it basically takes like contracts, uh, international business, business with like uh, like with the consumer to consumer, business to business, like how to write contracts, how to. Right. The language that they use, like examples, like how would this be interpreted in court, mm-hmm. and things like that. Never ever since I took business law, my first course, my first class, um, I enjoyed it a lot actually, and I feel like do, going through law is like one of the one of the main ways where I could be, become like resourceful and helpful and give back to my community in, in a certain type of way, you know? Because like if I know law, you know, there's like a lot of like legal shit you have to go through, like legal, there's also like loopholes you could like maneuver. Right. Broke through that you could use to your advantage and, and things like that too. But I feel like with with law and business go hand in hand, and they're like one of the two ever growing uh, empires, like or segments, if you want to say, like business in general. And like obviously, if someone's in trouble, they're gonna need a lawyer. If right. if someone's like legal advice, how to write this or how to, how to do that, they're gonna need a lawyer, right? Mm. You're and, and if someone needs a lawyer, it's too late for them already because they need your help now. Mm. You know, You're in control. I'm in control of the situation. Oh, and if also, and also if I become a lawyer and I know law. I, it's helpful for myself as well because oh, I know what I'm getting into before I'm getting into it before any problems arise that's cool yeah, and so it's basically like mitigating risk at that point I see you I know see. Yeah. and so also like I was doing business and it was kind of uh, like a coincidence that HK popped up afterwards too you know yeah, yeah. so like yeah, really instead of outsourcing that to someone else you don't know if they're telling the truth or not mm-hmm. you know you have someone you, you, someone you can rely on it's kind of like a mechanic you know if you know like a mechanic within your own family they're not gonna. They're not gonna scrape up like, oh, your car needs oil change, or your car needs a new brakes now, or your car needs a new engine. Mm, when you just bought that shit, you know. I now you have someone you can rely on in the industry who will give you insight, but also like give it just to other people as well. So that's one of the main reasons why I become wanted to become a lawyer or want want to do law in the first place. So because like I feel like that's one of the safest ways, safest best to make money, right? But at the same time, always having a a, a job consistently. Hmm. One of the one of the misconceptions I've heard about law and like the law industry um, is that like working your way up to like a position of either of power or of uh-huh. importance, because I've seen shows like Suits, for example, uh-huh. like is is that a accurate and uh, is that an accurate description or depiction of what really what it's like in your in your opinion, like from what you know and your expertise and your knowledge, or is that like really exaggerated? Like you you're not like some you know, lawyers, fucking little, uh, little buddy out there just doing his paperwork and stuff. Or is it really like that? No, no, no. I think as an entry level job, yeah. you have to get through that. You know, because it, it it builds you like character. It actually shows if you actually could do it in the first place. Because mm-hmm. if if someone gives you a task, say, oh, go file these papers for me, right? Yeah. And if you can do that properly, how mm-hmm. the fuck can you write a contract? You know. True. True. And I feel like if you learn how, it's like it all depends who you guys lawyer, like as you, who you're like uh internshiping for or having an apprenticeship for and things yeah. like that. That all really depends. But, like, talking about, like, the higher article ladder, if you want to be, like, the top, top dog, mm-hmm. that's more if you want to be, like, a corporate lawyer or oh, and okay. do more, like, corporate lawyer shit, you know? Yeah. For me, I'm trying to be more, like, work for a nonprofit, work for people who actually need my help, not really look work for that money, oh, you see. know? So, like, for me, personally, like, I could go the corporate route if I wanted to in the future to make, yeah. like, have, like, a, like, a sh- like, a shit ton of money right. or work for, like, like low income families, work for people who actually need my help, right. who actually need it, and then get recognition for that. And through that recognition, I can work with other group partnerships and other groups who have the same goal and mission as me. Because, like, sure. I can work for a corporate and do, like, lawyership but for, like, businesses and, like, actual, like, people who, who, who kind of don't really give a shit about you, you know? Because, like, mm-hmm. as soon as you don't do your job, they have someone else waiting in the door for you, right. you know? Right. I want to be more impactful and actually, like, help people who, like, need my help. And that, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's having – it's it's more about having more of an influence within an industry than actually influencing a bigger industry that yeah. doesn't – that can replace you, right? Easily, you're you're yeah. You're easily replaceable in that situation. Um, so I have a question, bro. So then, ha- have you heard of Legal Aid of Marin? Real quick. No, not yet. Oh, okay, they're uh, they're a nonprofit out here that me and Marco were actually just uh, learning about a little because I'm I'm doing a, a media design internship, and um, they're actually the opposite. So like instead of like a law internship where like like you said like mm-hmm. oh you maybe file paperwork blah blah, blah and then like kind of do the the boring you know the brokey jobs uh-huh. the wagey jobs here they're actually like letting us do these things where like 
you can um, edit your own video, uh-huh. um, you know. And so one of my tasks was a project of Legal Aid of Marin, and they were I was looking at the lawyers and and editing a video, and they were talking. And I'm like, oh shit, this is cool, because I was like, my friend's a lawyer, or my friend wants to be a lawyer, and I was telling him about that. I was telling him about my friend that translated the video, which was Abby. Uh-huh. He uh, translated the Portuguese, which was pretty interesting. So um, I hope I hope this year goes good. This yeah. is gonna be a fun one. This is your senior year, so um, you know, with the law, it, it's a uh, law. Law is crazy, bro. I think. I think the honestly the like the the police system here in the mm-hmm. U.S. the police in, or the not the industry the, um, the justice system the justice system in the United States is is it's not fair, bro. It's it's fucked up. Everything yeah. I think is is falling apart slowly, mm-hmm. and that might be a controversial view. A lot of you guys might agree. This is what I think, um, you know. But I think that the stuff that you want to do mm-hmm. is actually really important, and it's going to benefit a lot of people because. There's a lot of people that are misrepresented and that don't even have representation here in the in, in Marin, especially, you know, because we just see it from a first, you know, f- first person point of view. You know, mm-hmm. like I live in a good little neighborhood here, but, you know, like 15, 10 minutes down, you know, where some of my friends even live. Like you see poverty, you see, you know, corruption, you see all these fucked up things, really, which is uh, it's tough because, you know, you got to make a make a difference, uh, you know, either one person at a time or or you got to put in a lot of work. Um, which is, I think, why we're, we're doing HK, you know. Um, we want to influence a lot of people, and we're building up a company that, that's going to influence a lot of people. Um, lately, we've been having, like, you know, some trouble, and that's mm-hmm. how it goes with companies, bro. Like, when you're within a company, when you're within a group that's, you know, greater than yourself, it's not, you know, sunshine and daisies. It's a lot of fucking work. And so, um, you know, I want to know your perspective on, on HK and how you think that's been going. You know, I've mentioned in the past, you know, that HK, we've been struggling, bro. And that's just that's just a fact. You know, we haven't got our shirts yet. We haven't got, you know, um, a ton of content out. We And we've been talking about this. Yeah. And, and I think you guys out there know it, too, because uh, it's evident in the fact that our product is not uh, it's not even out there yet. You know, I can't even say it's a bad product because it doesn't even exist, yeah. which uh, it sucks to say, but I think us breaking it down and me hearing it from you uh, would be a good insight for me as, you know, HR and, and then you also as uh, sales and marketing, mm-hmm. uh, head of sales and marketing. So what, what do you what do you think about HK and how has your experience been, you know, working in, within a company, within a startup, really? I think the idea of, of humble community and what it represents is I, I, I liked it from the, from the get, just like yeah. just a group of people who want to better themselves and just, be the best version of themselves, but also be surrounded by people who have the same mindset and the same idea as you. Yeah. Like just having that message and that, that uh, I think that goal of like self improvement, always like self improvement, self improving, always like bettering oneself, like also o- like just always being willing to learn. I think is is a good um like tool to have. Yeah. But um, I think honestly, like at least at least these past couple of like what two three months probably. Yeah. Um, I think it's been kind of hard in the first place because like. We don't have funding at all. It's like all coming out of pocket. And I feel like that's kind of like money. Like it's hard to do shit without it, you know? Because mm-hmm. if, you, if you don't have any money, you can't really buy merchandise. You really can't buy uh, the tools needed to build a website or things like that. I don't know these might sound like excuses, but like it's just, true. just from the get. Because like we got here, what, in May? And then I feel like in, uh, when we got here in May was like when it really started kicking off. Because right. like once we were in school, it's like, yeah, we're doing things, but not really doing things. Mm-hmm. And that and that just came with, like with the learning curve, like, like what what you said earlier is like there's eight of us here, you know, working on it, and like it's kind of hard sometimes because like it's eight people's different perspectives on one thing, yeah. you know, and the way they view it is completely different from the other person next to them. Although we we have all have the same goal and mindset of working for HK, we all view it in a different manner, you know. Right. I feel like just getting getting through that's been kind of difficult for us right now, because mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of been where the bump in the road is, kind of in a way, because like. We all, all have different perspectives and we all have like different goals within HK. Yeah. Right? We, within we'll, ourselves. Within, yeah. ourselves yeah. within HK. And we have different goals for HK as well, you know? Right. So we all are, are kind of like attacking different things and like things of that nature, which I think is completely normal. But I think it just kind of sucks that we hit this sp- this speed bump in the road at the time we're hitting it right now. Because yeah. like honestly, like in the next, in what, two or three days from now, I'll be on a flight to Boston. Sheesh. Uh. Sheesh. So flight to Boston and a flight to Boston, so it don't make a difference. Yeah. But um, what's it called? <laughs> but it's it's just I, I just feel like it's, it's just something like you know it's it's hard it's it's hard like just working with a group of people although they're your friends, yeah. right? I think that kind of makes it harder as well too because like there's like a fine line of like business and friendship, you know, and when you put those two together and you and you work with them hand in hand, I feel like you might say some shit. 
business wise. Yeah. And but people might take that differently. It's like, oh, he's coming at me. It's like, uh, well, why is he being disrespectful? Why is he saying this? Why is he saying that? Well, da, 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 da. One thing is like, I, I've heard this too. It's like, you know, you can, you can have friends that and do business, but yeah. you can't have business with friends. friends exactly. It's, it's very tough. It's like friends. a very fine line. It's like yeah. you have the thin rope. You have to like walk on because like. As you said, like you can say, someone reach out to someone, be like, "Oh, can you do this for me?" Or can you, when, how's this looking like? You know, yeah. and it's fine, but like, I think just the part, the tricky part, is correcting someone, you know, because like since we really are friends and things like that, like we might fuck around, say a joke or two, yeah. you know, but then when it comes to like, oh, do this, you know, or, or you gotta do this, or you gotta do that, like we kind of sometimes say in the same meaner or, or demeanor, yeah. and it becomes um people take it the wrong way, yeah. although it's coming from heart, you know. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I, I definitely agree with you, bro. It, it's 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 hard to manage that, I think, too. Like, I, I've been trying to read like crazy. And, and I think these hardships and these bumps in the road is actually what is what we need, you yeah, know, honestly. because at, at the end of the day, it's like we've been through these things before. Like, you just have to sit down and say, like, yes, we've done this before. We've been through this before. This is not the end of the world. And it's going to help us in the end. And we're just going to get through it like it is. And I think that's like the beauty of it. And like, kind of, that's kind of what you said, too, with like, you know, um, going through some shit when you're a kid and then kind of going full circle with law mm-hmm. and like, you know, cause you've been through that situation before, but then, you know, as a lawyer or let's say as a person within the law that knows mm-hmm. the law, you're going to be on the other side. You're going to be talking to that kid and like letting him know, like, I'm going to put you on game because you know, I was in your position one yeah. day. And so it's a, it's a full circle thing. Um, and I think the content, I, I love doing the content, but I think like we were just talking about this earlier. Um, like, it's very hard to manage those type of things. Cause like, let's say for example, Andrew Tate, like if he says something on, on social media, you know, now he's banned, yeah. which is crazy. All the videos, including Andrew Tate, they just have an algorithm to ban yeah. him. It's like, bro, how is that even fair? Like with censorship, right? Like yeah. how can we, like, let's say our message is, you know, um, create groups, create groups, create groups. Like we think that group culture is like the way to go. Yeah. Right. And let's say, I don't know, like Instagram bans us for that. It's like, bro, like what's, what's up with the censorship, you know? Yeah. Um, how important do you think, like, that, I guess, story or that, you know, use case is, like, Andrew Tate and, you know, censoring him? Because it might be a controversial topic, but I think that's actually pretty important, bro. Like, I just feel like there's, a, there's like, a certain limit to everything that you, you do, you know? Like, I feel like there's something should be and some intervention, too. But, like, Andrew Tate, although he does say some, like, outlandish shit, you know, like, there's some points he does make which are kind of valid, you know? And then the thing is, like, it's just his opinion, you know? And I feel like I don't know why someone else's opinion should have be so impactful on, like, your own life. Because I feel like once that happens, you're too attached to that person or to that idea. And that shouldn't be happening. Because, like, it's someone's... First of all, like, no one who's who's bitching and complaining about Andrew Tate and his message has never met him in person. They don't know who his person actually is, you know? Like, right now, watching this podcast right now, like, people after this, reading this, have never seen me before or have seen me or talked to me before... We have their, a certain perce- uh, perception of me, you know? Right. And either when you meet me in person, I can make it, reinforce it, or I could break it. And that's all up to you because that's your perspective and that's your opinion, you know? And I feel like in this day and age, and two people are getting too worked up about other people's ideas on them, yeah. which should, it should have any effect on, on them whatsoever, you know? Right. And I feel like opinions are just opinions, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. And if someone might have a good opinion on you or a bad opinion on you, and it's, and, uh, and it's up to you to, to decide which one you you worry more about the one that actually has good praise for you or the one that has or the one that kind of just like just gives gives you shit you know yeah. and i feel like censorship on top of that is just kind of like bullshit like how can you tell me what i'm saying is wrong you know yeah. how can you tell me all my life experiences everything that that's made me up to this point are not true you know cuz from my perspective they've happened to me right exactly yeah exactly. They, they've that's happened exactly. to me before i know i've lived that situation and you to tell me like Oh no, you can't post that. Oh no, you can't say this. Oh no, you can't do that. Like, who are you to tell me what I can, I can't do? Like, you're not my parents. Either way, if you were my parents, I still wouldn't listen to you because it's, it's my opinion. You know, it's like it's something that I believe in. You know, obviously there's some form of respect between that people, that person and me, but still, I'm not let, let that person just influence me and say, no, I can't, I can't do this anymore because this person thinks that I'm, what I'm saying is wrong. Uh, it just, I think another lesson in that is exactly what you're saying is like, I, I would call that like the hate culture type of shit about exactly. it. You know, like people always want to find a way to hate. And it's funny because I actually like how you said that too, how, you know, someone may see this and no, have known you or maybe they don't, but let's yeah. say they do, they did know you. And then now I, I would argue that you're a completely different person. Like I think, and me and Marco were talking about this too, because this is kind of like a philosophical exercise, uh-huh. but thinking about like, oh, like, are you the same person you were when you were five years old? Like, are you that same dude? 
it's like, well, some people say, yeah, yeah, that's me. That's who I am. That's Eric Garcia. So I'm Eric Garcia. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I mean, are you really? Because I feel like you're a whole different type of person. And you could think about it in the way like a, a molecule, right? Like if you have a particle and it sheds an electron, you know, is it the same molecule? Well, like, no, it's not. It's a different molecule. Mm-hmm. Same thing with me. Like every day I'm constantly shedding like micro, you know, micro skin on my on my body. Mm-hmm. Am I the same person? It's like, well, that, that brings up the question, you know, like, yes no i don't know it's very it's very hard to think about those things and i i don't want to bore y'all out there with with this story but should i dc is the ship nah nah look up look up dc is the ship if you guys are curious about it it's a very interesting um it's a paradox yeah. um but essentially it's like yeah it's whatever i don't want to bore you with it <laughs> but like yeah the hate the hate the hate that you receive bro it's just so interesting because people will claim that they know you like mm-hmm. they, they've known you and they know who you are they know what you're doing behind the scenes it's like no i'm, I'm actually doing a lot yeah. and, and people don't notice that which is which is insane and i think it's a testament to like um what you're doing at school because i mean mm-hmm. i don't see the shit that you guys are going through like i don't know how intense uh, a private school like that is you know um you know what, what what's up with the challenges out there like besides like because i know the social life is probably crazy but like you know what is that what is that like and then what are you expecting this year i think the challenges for me were just getting that initial like the first two years like it was just kind of like not really eye-boggling or shocking to me it was just more like eye-boggling i'm a dumbass fucking mind-boggling <laughs> fucking whatever um i think it was just shocking to me just like okay going from marin or from tl to like babson like although like at, at tl was like 50 50 like brown kids and like white kids it was fine because like the amount of wealth or money they had compared to me was like relative it was like more like containable like more closer right. but going out to the fucking east coast to a, a, a private s- school that's number one in business you know so you get like having international students and shit too like you know like i try to get over that feeling of like me actually belonging there you know i feel like it's like sometimes i walk into a class and i just see like me and another brown person and everyone else would be white shit. you know i'm like shit like fuck all right you know and then same thing again boom same thing again, boom, all your class, you're like that, like, oh shit. And you look around and you're like, no one. Are the, are the people different though? Like, how are the uh, people, how are the people? The people there? Like, if you had to describe I think, it. I think in the beginning, I was like super in my head about like, all oh, these people don't, don't fuck with me. These people are judging me. These people are like, oh, they're, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't want anything to do with me. Is it because I'm, I'm, I'm brown? Maybe it's because like, I don't, I don't bring shit to the table that they're looking for, like money, shit they could get better themselves off of. Maybe that too. But like, as I get, got to know more people, like close, like closer and shit, especially like like my white friends out there in school, you know who you are too. Um, shout out. Yeah, shout out to y'all. <laughs> um, but like hanging out with them and just being like around some some of them like are super fucking nice, super chill. Like they don't give a shit if if you're broke, if you have money, if you have this, if you have that. Mm-hmm. They all think that like what's it called? That like no no they just like they just like me as a person. I and and, and they don't know, but it just means a lot to me because like sometimes like. I had like that struggle with, with within me and like externally and externally with like I don't know who to fuck with like I don't know who my group of people were at the time of day because like you know me I'm hella brown I'm hella Mexican I I'm slapping my corridos like my my Spanish music hella loud singing that shit hella loud you know and just like yeah essentially yeah <laughs> and um but the thing is like I don't look like that either yeah you, you know really so I'm in that in that dilemma that paradox because like sometimes like people come up to me. And they speak Spanish in front of us. One time, one time that happened, when some shawty was trying to get at me, and I didn't get at the shawty. And she started started speaking fe- Spanish in front of me, and I just started laughing my ass off. Wait, she was like talking shit to you in Spanish? To her friend. About you? About me in Spanish. So, yeah. I was just like, laughing my ass What'd off. What'd you do? Bro. What'd you do? I was like, Usted español, verdad? And they're like, huh? Hella shocked and shit, you know? Hella surprised. Bimbo! Yeah, dumbass me. Fucking bimbo. Dumbass me. But, um, what's it called? But no, like, just going to that, that dilemma too, because like, I'm hella Mexican. I'm proud to be Mexican. I'm proud to be where I'm from, where I come from culturally, uh, ethnically, whatever the hell you want to fucking pray to, whatever word you want to put in it. I'm proud to come where I, where I come from. Right. And I think I carry that around me wherever I go. You know, I think so you guys could be testaments to that shit too. Like, wherever I go, I'm proud to be like this, you know? Yeah. And um, I think just going there, they just viewed me as a different person. Or at least I think they did, but they never really... They really don't pay no mind to you. Like, honestly, like, anyone out there, like, if you're struggling in class... Worry about like oh like this person thinks this of me this person thinks that of me like it's complete bullshit because like the thing that like clicked for me is that everyone at my school was going through their own little thing right you know right. and they're they're not just solely focused on on you 
they focus on themselves. That's you know? so true. Let me. I wanna. I wanna say because I, that's like so true. But the way I see it, because I always get those eyes, bro. Whenever I'm in like this, like like a Fairfax or Mill Valley, Quinn there, I always feel that presence. But I didn't realize that when you say they're always focused on themselves, it's not them within themselves. It's them and the other white people surrounding them. And white people, like, please argue me if I'm wrong. Like, please call me up. You, my shit is down in the description. Let me know if you want to debate because I just want to understand your perspective because how I see it is like they're always in competition with themselves. That's why you get like a lot of like the oh white people are snobby, white people are like pretentious, right? And I can kind of see that because they're always competing with themselves and when they see someone that's different, it's almost like oh that person is different. Like they can be noticed. Yeah. That's just the way I see it. But you know if I'm wrong, let me know because I'm not trying to be like you know aggressive about it or like really talk shit. I just want to understand if that's even true, if that's how you guys see it because a lot of people that are white from this area have came up with money and so when you say that they fuck with you because you're actually a genuine person yeah. it is because you are genuinely a genuine person like you literally have nothing uh to hide you have nothing to fear like you're gonna be who you are mm -hmm. and that's why like i think all of us like for us we just see that as normal like kicking it with a bunch of brown people yeah. me like i just see it as normal like, i'm gonna say what i want to say and i'm gonna mean what i say right but that's just normal for me but mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't like that no, no, and no, so no. it's it's weird to see that um and so that's why I asked that question, you know, like how, why, like why, why are they like that? Or like, how do you see them? Because I would always have that fearful mindset. Like, I feel like they're going to judge me. Like they think I'm some like dirty Mexican. Like mind you, I am hella dark. I'm fucking dark, bro. But like I'm now I'm proud of like, like you said, like where I come yeah. from, um, which is interesting. You know, that's always an interesting take. I don't yeah. know if you got, if you agree or if you think kind of like that, but that's how I was. I mean, yeah, there's like also like it's also just growth and growing as well. Like I had to get comfortable in my own body. I had to get comfortable in my own shit with the shit I was dealing with myself. Cause y'all, y'all know I was, I was been through two relationships already, long distance. That's just hard. I don't recommend it to anyone, honestly. If you could avoid it, avoid it. Uh, I mean, it was it was nice being in them, right? But like the amount of effort, energy, and time it took to actually make this shit work, it really kind of didn't balance out in in the in the long run. Cause like obviously like for me, for sure. school had to come first. And it always has to come first, you know? And I, I don't want to get into it, but, like, just if you're going into one, like, really think about it. Because like, you say, like, I love this person. I love that person. But, like, at the end of the day, like, love ain't shit, you know? That's my perspective on it. Because, like, you could love someone one day. City boys. And then the next day, be like, oh, I don't love them anymore. Because love is just a feeling, you know? Yeah. Like, that, that song by Joey, Bo Joey Badass. That song slaps, by the way. In, in uh, any perspective. I see it, like, in a similar way, but, like, more in an economical pr perspective. Like, if I'm doing a long-distance relationship, am I really getting more than what I'm putting in? Or am I getting at least what I deserve from what I'm putting in? Answer is no. Like, yeah. you're not getting shit. Like, whether it's sexually, whether it's physically, whether it's emotionally. Or all three. Yeah, yeah or, yeah, exactly. Or all three. Um, that's why, like, like you said, too, like, and, and Drake said this one. He said that, you know, relationship is slowing me down. It slowed down the vision. I'm yeah. like, damn, like, that's so true. Because, yeah. like, you have these plans. You have these goals. And, you know, I want a woman that's actually, you know, going to, you know, like lift me up. That's like yeah. a cheerleader almost like that's going to help me out through the trials and tribulations, but also just be by my side and, and be loyal and stick through it and let me do what I got to do yep. to, you know, provide. But to find someone like that in, in, this, in this day and age, age, fuck no, bro. Exactly. That, that, that providing part you said, like, what are you, what are you going to provide that I can provide? Exactly. Well, I don't get into this topic right now. Yeah, but yeah, like, it's like, not some red pill, you know. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But like, some, some of the shit they be saying is like super. Uh, what's this? What like what Stephen A. says is a fucking um. Uh, atrocious. Not, not atrocious. What's the word? The fucking Stephen A. Uh, Smith always says. Oh, blasphemous. Like, it's blasphemy, bro. Straight blasphemy. Yeah, bro. it's blasphemy. Then yeah, I, yeah. I mean, but we're just doing what we got. Yeah, do. I know. Honestly, you know, we just, we just to be around if you think you really love that person. Go ahead and love them. Yeah. But um, just know it, it comes and goes. You know, don't trip about one person. Don't trip about one thing. If I had to give my advice, I would just say, like, like what you said, you know, stick to the vision. Do what you got to do, you know, stick to the plan and she'll she'll come your way. Yeah. And what that means is, you know, like not that like you're going to do your job and, and a girl's going to magically walk your way. No, it's like women will notice when you're actually in your bag and when you're in that flow state, when you're actually working as hard as you can and and pro and providing for yourself and loving yourself. Yeah. And as a byproduct of that, whoever, whichever woman you approach, whoever you want to get at. That's yours, bro. That's easy. And That's it, light work. And same shit. That shit just, like, if you just focus on yourself and just work on yourself primarily, like, everything else that comes with that is going to come along, like, that route, too. You know, like, you could be working on yourself, you know, and then, like, you, you meet someone just for the first time randomly, and then you guys just click it automatically, you know? Like, all the work you put into yourself is, like, being reinvested to some, some other place, you know? Exactly. So slowly but surely, like, the more you work on yourself, the more you love yourself, the more you 
appreciate yourself for what you're actually doing and how on how far you've come, you've actually came and you give yourself that appreciation though that makes him kind of cocky kind of like oh like i'm this i'm that da, 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 da. but like if you're not gonna support yourself no one else is gonna come and support you, you know and all you have friends you can have family members but like it all ultimately just comes down you versus you you know and that's Sheesh, yeah. that's like just like the, the goal and mission because like Yes, I have I have Abraham there as or AP as my fuck Abraham my fucking little cousin, <laughs> fucking Abraham. um, uh, Abraham. pinche Ape. Ape. There he's my he was my roommate last year for the past two years. You know, him having me there like, came along long help, but like at the end of the day, he's not gonna do my work for me. You know, yeah. so like although you can have friends and, and acquaintances and shit like that too, but like you always gotta put yourself first at the end of the day in order for yourself to become successful because like. You could have friends for one day, and then you could do some shit, and then, like, the next day, they're not there, you know? It's as simple as that. It's one day, they're this, one day, they're that. Yeah. So, I mean, you can learn that the hard way, the easy way, and you just always just put yourself first, and, like, that time and energy that's being, like, put into yourself is to be recycled and just put for your future and shit like that. It's, it's like, almost like exponential growth. Like, yeah. a, as you're growing up, like, one turns to two, two goes to four, four goes to eight, and it just keeps going, almost like the rule of doubles, like yeah, we were talking about eight, that one day. Six, six, um, yeah. And then, you know, that aspect comes back in every in every aspect of your life. Or that, sorry, that rule comes back in every aspect of your life. Like, let's say you learn how to edit very quickly, you know, then that turns, you know, uh, coding very easily for you because you're understanding the process of that. And then that turns into, you know, what we're doing right now, building a business. You know, that, that turns up there. And so all those aspects kind of get put together. And that's where you kind of level up in a sense, yeah. like you said, where it's you versus you. And it's like, oh, shit, okay. Yeah, and, and people get people could notice that and sense that as well, too. Like, people mm-hmm. notice and sense it, and then they want to become your friend. They come out of the, their way to come talk to you. They come out of your way yeah. to, to come see you, you know? And you know, you didn't do, like, much change. All you did was just, all right, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do this. All right, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do work. I'm going to do this. And people, slowly but surely, they start, like, noticing it. Like, every single day, they start noticing it. Okay, this food's always in the library at this 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 at this time. Next day, he's still here. Next day, he's still there. Next day, he's still there. Oh, shit, this was actually, like, serious about his shit, you know? And there's, there's a group of people who go to the library to actually study, and there's a group of people that go to, like, any place actually just to do work or you see them fucking around, you know? But when it comes to finals time, like, the people who fuck around are all in the library at, the, at the, like, the final two weeks because they all need to study. They all need to get crammed their shit in. And then, like, people are just, no, I'm, I, I study. I, I cram my, my shit last minute, too, but I'm, at least I'm in there weeks beforehand actually yeah. putting in that work, you know? Yeah. And something I gotta work on as well, just procrastination and just being like on top of my the schedule I've actually set for myself. Cause sometimes it gets hard and shit too, but like that's also just another fucking excuse. It's called being lazy and just being not doing your your your, your best. Yeah, no, and, and I want to uh, just make that clear too, because if if you guys get any message away from this podcast, it's it's what you said. You know, is don't be lazy and just just do it. Just do what you gotta do. Really, that's all it is. Like. Um, we, we talk a lot about on, on this podcast about, you know, the victim mindset and having that mindset like, oh, like, you know, my past fucked me up. So I'm going to be a fuck up for the rest of my life. It's like, bro, you, you, you take two paths. A lot of life I see is black and white. Yes and no. 50 50. Like it's either are you going to go forward or are you going to go back? Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, the right answer, you know, the right. It's again, 50 50 right or wrong. You're going to choose the right answer, or the wrong answer. And that's how I see it, because a lot of a lot of shit now is. is is in gray you know a lot of people want to say like there's three genders or there's you know three choices or there's three whatever there's 10 you know yeah. chocolate vanilla strawberry rainbow sherbet whatever yeah, right it's, like, hungry. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's yes or no like are you gonna yeah. right from wrong and that's where you know that's where you um where you really start to see the progress and so it's yeah. it's good it's good to see those things you know so if, if you guys listen in, you know if if you take my banter you take my jokes or you take my my soul for you know something that like is is a perspective that you don't understand what i'm trying to say is make the right decision you know that, that's yeah. really at heart what i want to say and what i you know what i preach every day you know yeah just going back to that cycle it's either you, you break it or you, or you make it i mean what is what i'm trying to say is that basically like you can either break the cycle that you were put into and be that one standout you know and being that standout kid or like changing the the the, the life not only for yourself but for generations to come yeah you know like you could break it or be or 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 uh, reinforce the cycle, you know. So if you say like yeah. you fuck up right and you go have like a shitty ass nine to five job that you don't like, you know, like for example, like my, my dad does construction, right? And he didn't go to school because he couldn't. Obviously, he didn't he didn't even graduate fucking what the third grade in Mexico, you know. Yeah. And then same with my mom, you know. And they came here, you know, and they couldn't go to school obviously because they were like they didn't have they they just couldn't. So they just worked and worked and worked, right? In order to give me this opportunity to go to college, right? But I had the choice to either 
not going to school, fucking around in school, and then reinforcing the cycle, and then hoping for one of my children to make me rich so I don't have to work for the rest of my life anymore, you know? It's either I I was the one to, like, obviously just to go out off from school too, but, like, on top of that, like, I feel like sometimes when I when I come back, I'm happy to see my family, my uncles, my aunts, my, my nephew Noah, uh, Nando, my mom, my dad, everyone, because, like, it just reminds me of who I'm doing it for because it's, it's, I'm not doing it just for myself. You know, I feel like that's kind of what separates me from people in my school too because, like, right. if they fail college or whatever they do, they just go back to their family and the family gives them, like, a, a job with, yeah, uh, like, exactly. six figures. We're like, well, I go back. What the fuck am I going to do? Construction for the rest of my fucking life? Work at a McDonald's? Work at uh, at a restaurant? Work as this and that? Like, yes, those jobs are... I'm not, I'm not shitting on those jobs, right? Right. That, I just see what my parents have gone through, like, day in and day out being, like, miserable being in pain uh not able to go out on vacation i go explore other parts of the world stuck in their same little place every single fucking day. like okay thank you for what you guys are doing but like i don't want to live like you guys i'm there's a lot more to life than just work and work and work and work and work and i know that you don't fucking like that you just run your days out you know like yeah. i understand like there's a lot more to life than just that shitty ass nine to five job that no one wants to fucking work exactly. but you have to because that, that's the only way you're going to survive mm-hmm. and it's not fair it's not just but like Everyone ultimately at the end of the day makes their own decisions, you know, yeah. and you always, yeah, and you true. and you have your own choice, and that ultimately like the blame, like you were saying earlier, is like oh my my past was this, so I'm gonna continue doing this. Yeah. No, you have the choice to either change, or just continue with the flow. And yeah. the change is hard, change is difficult, as we all know. But like, it's up to you to make that choice, you know. And just going back to like coming back to school, like back and forth, back and forth, like it reminds me of what I don't want to be stuck into, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And then just, I think that just gives me like a different perspective because like. Just going out to the East Coast and coming back here, like you see that two different types of lifestyles that people have. Yeah, you you it gets you to appreciate the little things yeah. in life, like we talked about earlier. Like, you know, your family, you you see them, you love them, but you don't want to be yeah, no. living like that, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. ever ever in the future. You know, you've done that for the past 20, 20 almost twenty one years of your life. Yeah. So you got to break that cycle, exactly. and that all that is motivation is adding fuel to the yeah. fire, which is, which is good, bro. I think that you're in, you're in a good position to be seeing those little things and appreciating those little things. Cause I mean, like, bro, like I was on a flight back from Hawaii and I was waiting in a line, bro. And this line took like two hours and I'm like, I'm never going to wait in line again. And maybe I am going to yeah, wait in line, yeah. you know, but, uh, but if I have that mindset, like, dude, this is fucking pissing me off. I do not want to wait in line next time I'm at the airport. Then I'm going to find a way not to wait in line, whether that's getting a private jet yeah. or fucking fast pass of, at Six Flags, you know? Over the TSA pre check. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to wait in line because that, that pisses me off. And so I appreciate the little things, you know, like, um, you know, like the littlest things, like San Pellegrino water, how it's beautifully packaged, you know? It's just like, I appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. And yeah, so yeah. it's just, it's, I know what you mean. And everybody sees it in their own ways, which is, which is incredible, you know, and that's why, that's what I like doing, that's why I love doing this, you know, um, I, I like seeing how, how you think, and, and what you have to say, and your perspective, but also, not only analyzing it, but like, also, uh, thinking about it from an objective view, and then my own view as well, and then obviously documenting it, and having people see it, you know, I don't make money from this, but it's just what I like doing, bro, yeah. and, and you know, this, this has been almost an, it's been an hour already, and we, yeah. and this just passed by like this, so, yeah. um, you know, I appreciate you for coming on here. This has been an amazing podcast. You know, before we wrap it up, I do want to ask you one last uh-huh. question. Um, and you were alluding to it too. So, you know, you talked to me about like, you know, what you don't want to live like. So uh-huh. then, you know, brings me to the future. You know, what what do you see yourself doing or how do you see yourself in 10 years? In 10 years? Well, um, well this is, okay, it's, it's a bit of a process though. Mm-hmm. All good. So um, my, my goal for this year at least, or for this school year, so I, I graduated in May. Um, so yeah, you, you'll be seeing me what, Minimum three years of those 10 years taken away, right? right. But it's technically five years because once I graduate uh, college in May, um, I either take like a gap year or two years off mm-hmm. because um, normally what, what uh, graduate schools like that and law schools like that like to see is that, okay, what are you doing in your free time? Right. What did you do outside of school? And like what else you bring to the table than just your academics and shit too, right? Because like – there's like a balance you know because like you could be like the smartest person in the fucking world but if you're like a dickhead to people yeah. no one's gonna fucking like you right. right like no one's gonna like you right so you could be like i'm not saying i'm stupid because I don't, I don't think i'm stupid right but like i, I I'm, I'm not like the smartest person in the room either but i'm not the dumbest so i'm like i say i'm like on the bell curve if you know what bell curve is i'm more on the uh 
on the right on the right tail because that's more on on the lower side. But anyway, um, so yeah, so I, once I graduate, uh, once I graduate college, um, I'm gonna take two years off most likely. Uh, and probably those two years, I'm have to get an internship through my uh, CDC program at Babson, and then once I find an internship, I land it. Um, I'm probably be working at the internship for one or two years, and then um, take that study for the outside. And if you don't know what the outside is, it's basically like the SAT, but for law school. And I have to study for that. And it's like one of the hardest exams in the world. So um, I mean, I'm up, I'm up for it. But um, hopefully, then I just take those two years off, and then in three years, I attend my graduate school. And then I'll be what five years from now. I'll be what twenty five, twenty six, and hopefully by then I start my career honestly. And then from that point forward, just have a stable job, um, make the money I want to be making, uh, be doing the thing I want to uh love, and just help people back out either here in my community or uh wherever job I I land after my graduate school. You know because like typically what what happens is um where you graduate from is t- is typically where you tend to stay at. Cause law firms don't want you to work for them for two years and then leave. Cause they want you to be once you have that job, it's kind of like a stable job. Also, you have to be good at it. But like once you get it, you tend to have it for like a very long time. Yeah. Cause like you're in that region, you know the law, oh that region very well. You know what's going on in your little community, your little right. county. You know you you know the people who who are kind of making decisions around there and things like that too. And it's a lot easier for you to connect with other people too. Cause like a lawyer could be at a firm for thirty years. And they could be, they know other lawyers at another firm, you know? I see. And you just connect and integrate with people. But at least for the next 10 years, it's probably have a start, uh, just be up and running as a, as a fucking company. Not as a company, what I'm talking about. To work for, for either a nonprofit or or a firm that just has the same goals and missions that I do and just um, be successful and just fucking, well, I'll be 26. What I, I don't know. I won't have a kid by then. No, 26 is too early. <laughs> um, 10 kids, man. 10 kids? Fuck no. I might have one or two, but kids, kids are difficult, but, uh, maybe have a, have a girlfriend, have a, someone, uh, who has the same goals as me, same, same environment, same uh, ideas would be very helpful because like you, you're like-minded individuals. They push you, you, you push them, they push you. And I feel like that should be healthy for me. But, um, honestly, just my, my goal f- and with the next 10 years is to, um, what's it called? Just g- graduate, a uh, uh, college twice. And then um, just have just have a job I love doing every single day, and just be happy with who I am, and be happy who 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 with who's around me, and just be um living not day to day but um just be in a place where I'm not comfortable, but just be in that in that state where like okay I'm here right now I like what I'm doing, but I feel like I need there's one more step for me to be where I really want to be at. I feel like it's come out of those 10 years because I feel like I need to work for a good m- m- amount of time to really solidify myself as a as a lawyer yeah. and become recognized. And then from there on out, I'll probably branch myself to like different type of departments or different groups or different just different areas around the fucking U.S. or around the world too. Because okay. if I could travel the world and be still helping people legally, yeah. that'd be like a, a, a goal of mine too. Because like also if HK, HK is still going to be going around and things like that too. And by the time in 10 years from now, I'll probably be booming and and one of the main uh things that people talk about so if yeah. if we're continuing in trajectory we're trying to continue on just be a better version of ourselves i think um in the within those 10 years i could also be working for hk it's my full-time job as well yeah. and i wouldn't be opposed to that at all because yeah. it would just be us seven us eight uh friends but also business uh, mongols businessmen <laughs> mongolos, mongolos. Yeah, yeah. but um these people who want to just, just be the best just be out there and then I just I think like in the same in those next ten years I just I just do that yeah but simply just be successful graduate um get my masters get my gra- get my bachelors and um just be at a spot where I've always dreamt of being you know right. of like finally having my own house or my own place where I can stay at comfortably um have have the car I really want not the best car but like car. uh my dream car yeah dream car my dream car is probably a G wagon. Okay. I love G wagons. Yeah, nice you gotta have clean. kids. If you have a G wagon, you gotta have kids. And I got that space in the back. Yeah. So you know what be happening? Yeah, yeah. Taking but, the kids to the game. Nah. Taking the dog for a while. <laughs> nah. Two th- two things that stood out for me, which which actually connect very well, is like the process of actually onboarding into a, a firm, like you said, or to a corporation. Like you have to um, kind of. It's a process, right? Yeah. And that's why they keep you because like every 
company has different culture and so like same thing with location that's part of the culture mm-hmm. right so you got to get onboarded into that company and then if you're getting onboarded for six months or whatever like learning their lingo learning their places learning oh. their connections like it's benef- more beneficial for you to stay there for a long term mm-hmm. than like move around move around and then that connects really well into the technology uh, aspect of things because technology is the future bro if you have a job that can just let you go from place to place country to country helping people with the law helping against their you know oppression or against the judicial system there or justice system my bad um there you know that's that's steady income you know you have a portfolio of um you know credibility that's online that's portable it's you know with, with web3 coming up you guys probably know like everything is just going to be you know instant like you know they pay you like oh you, you take uh you take Bessel, not take bitcoin bro just send it into my wallet and boom it's like that and so that's i think that vision and that uh plan is setting you up for success and so um if if again for you guys watching this is very important that is the future you know having digital income and and that's going to allow you to basically be mobile and and mobility is the most important thing you know in the 48 laws of power it says you want to be liquid you want to be able to basically have no form you're not you're not grounded into anything you know if you're grounded into one community if you're grounded into one uh you know state if one house if you have a house and, and you know you're not able to move from place to place you know within your own right and within your own you know basically presence you know you're not able to to go where you want to go and do what you want to do then you know, at least for me, is that a life worth living? I say, no, I want to do what I want and do it when I want to. Um, and so that's that's where the digital, you know, digital income comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, great answer. I love that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, if you guys don't know, he's heading out, out to uh, to Boston and yeah. basically like 48 hours. So if you're hours, watching you know? this, what, Wednesday? Yeah. Fuck yeah, like 48 hours, time, more or less. By the time they see it, you'll be out there. So yeah, you, you share it with the Babel boys and uh, honestly, no, I will. So, uh, they'll see it. They'll see it too. Yeah, we really got people out there um, waiting for our merchandise for HK to drop. People them. have been messaging us, texting us, liking our stories that we post and shit like that. Just like people are really fucking with it, you know. And I feel like no, no, there's come like not a mis- like a uh, mystery behind it, but people are just, I feel like are just interested and just see what this is really all about. But um yeah no I'm I'm excited to go back I'm looking forward to it and just the final year make it the best year you know academically socially but I know we make it but I gotta make it the best. Yep, last year best year you guys heard it here. Um so yeah uh again thank you very much for coming out here bro this is a this is a good one they're all always a good one but it's always it's always good I think you're the first one of my boys to actually be on it besides like Chris Woods but he that episode as you guys might not know was. Uh, let's just say that one was for the bin uh so woody yeah woody uh anyways appreciate all you guys for watching this this was an amazing episode as always um all danny's links will be down below um babson college will be down below is it babson university or babson Babson college babson college babson college will be down below in the description as well all the powerhouse links will be down there and then so will um the hk merch uh click down below and you guys will find it uh yeah, I appreciate all you guys for watching. You could have been doing anything else, but instead you're listening to this podcast. If you guys got all the way through, uh, make sure to leave a like, comment, and uh, make sure to subscribe because we got some interesting guests. And hopefully in a week, I don't know what the schedule's like, but I'll have um, the guy behind the camera out here as well, you know, Mr. Mister AP. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all for uh, listening in, and we will see you guys next time. Deuce. Adios. Bye.